Okay, so hey there guys. So today's video is going to be my May favorites. If you guys did not notice or you haven't watched my videos in a while, I did cut my hair last week, so I did get it pretty short. I'm not absolutely in love with this, but uh, my mom seems to really like it, but my mom always wanted my hair to be super short when I was little, but I'm not like obsessed in love with it, but uh, I'm just going to keep it behind my ears for now. I'm still like not in love with it. Um, I do need to wash my hair tonight, but I don't... I didn't really have a chance to film my favorites video after this because after this I'm actually going to be like pretty busy again. Um, but today was actually like my only day where I wasn't really doing anything. I was supposed to go to happy hour um, today but some like stuff happened with my friends so we pushed it to uh, next week. So I'm just going to go through my favorites with you guys. I just want to conceal this real quick. This is kind of annoying me. Alright, so sorry about that. I'm not sure how much of these products I'm going to be able to get through before my mom starts making dinner. I'm just going to start start talking about primers and foundations and then we'll probably continue this later. So I haven't really picked up any new primers recently. I really need to actually. I literally use like the same four primers like every single day of my life because I am just not high maintenance when it comes to primers. I have the Wet n Wild Photo Focus one, the e.l.f. one which is the Mineral Face Primer, which is a great one too, and I have the Steel One Step Corrector, and those are literally the only three primers I really do use. Um, but I did get a sample of this a while ago from Sephora, and I have been reaching for this a lot more. This is the Becca First Light Priming Filter. I think it's really nice just to um, moisturize your skin when you first uh, apply your makeup. It makes your skin very dewy. So I have been enjoying this. It's very um, lotion-y and very moisturizing when you first put it on. It's very, um, it's very similar to the backlight priming filter. So I just think that Becca's primers are ridiculously expensive, but I do like this because it's just a little mini size. So that's what it looks like, and it's a pretty decent mini size. So I'm definitely going to use this up, but um, I really have been enjoying that. And then for foundation, I really wanted to mention this one. This has been one of my favorite foundations to use throughout the month, especially since it's been getting warmer, since it's basically almost summer. Summer's in like three weeks. So it's almost June, like today's like May 30th. So I've been reaching for this foundation a ton. This is the Lorac Natural Performance Foundation in the shade um, NP1, Nat NP1 Porcelain. I don't know if I mentioned this in my last favorites video because I don't think I had tried it out too much. So I didn't want to give you guys my thoughts yet, but I definitely did use this a lot more this past month. And I really, really, really love it. I didn't want to talk about too many foundations this month um, since I, yes, I have been rotating most of my foundations again, but I have told you guys my thoughts on them a ton um, on the newer ones that I had tried. But this one was definitely the last one I had purchased in April, and I did try to basically use it all through May and it's a really good foundation. It's very light on the skin, very creamy, very moisturizing and it has it's a great match for me. And again, I did say it does really remind me of the number 7 consistency of that foundation, the Lift and Luminate. But this one gives me a little bit more coverage and it doesn't make me as greasy um throughout the day cuz the number 7 I can't really wear for like a long period of time. I'm wearing the Physicians Formula today. And I've been wearing this for like four hours. I just love this foundation because it's so light coverage, but it gives you such an even complexion. It's so beautiful. But this one doesn't really get greasy on me as opposed to the number seven. So that's why I prefer this one a little bit more. But this one doesn't do that. And it's just really light on the skin, really comfortable to wear. Really have been enjoying it. I just wore it a couple of days ago to work, I think, on like Sunday or Saturday. And it looked really good on my skin throughout the, the whole shift. Or maybe it was Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday night. Or maybe I wore the Giorgio Armani. Anyway, I know I wore it very recently. And I really have been loving it. So I really didn't think I was going to love this foundation so much. But it is a great foundation. As you can see, I've used quite a bit already um, since it's like up to here. But yeah, really have been enjoying that. So if you can find it at Marshalls, it's like 8 bucks. Um, and then, of course, another foundation I found at Marshalls, I want to talk about this again because I still, like, love using this and I can't stop using it. All right, I reach for it quite often. This is the Burberry 
Cashmere Long Lasting Flawless Soft Matte Foundation in the color Porcelain Number no. 11. I just think that this was a perfect balance of soft matte, but it's still matte, but it gives you life to your skin. I don't know if I told you guys in a favorites video yet, but I did return the Fenty Beauty Foundation. It was way too matte for my skin. I much prefer this foundation for my skin because the Fenty Beauty claims to be a soft matte foundation, but this one does as well. But this one feels a lot lighter on the skin, and I think this is much better for dry skin as opposed to the Fenty Beauty. I know that um, Stephanie Nicole tried out the Fenty Beauty and she wore it and whatever, and she said that she liked it, but I probably have just as dry skin as her, and I just couldn't get it to work for me. It was just way too dry on my skin. I just feel like it's better for oily skin. I think that this is much better, and this is like $14 at Marshalls as opposed to $52 full price, and I don't think you can get this shade anymore. Um, so if you can find it at Marshalls, I don't know if they really have that many left, but once I saw this, I snatched this guy up, and I do not regret it at all. It is a beautiful foundation, so I love that. And then the last one I wanted to talk about, because I mostly, I did get to wear my Lancome and my Dior foundations a few times this month, because um, I was able to rotate a lot of foundation this month, because I basically wore makeup every single day. There wasn't really one day I wasn't wearing makeup. Um, because I just love to wear makeup every day. I know, like, some people don't, but I like wearing makeup basically every day. This is, like, my typical face that I'll do for every day wear if I'm not doing much. Um, I wasn't going to wear foundation today, but then it ended up just kind of happening. I put it on and I didn't even realize that I didn't want to wear foundation. So, I was like, might as well finish my face. I'm not going to just wipe it off. So, um, but I do still think that those two foundations are my absolute holy grail favorite foundations, the Dior and the Lancome. I tried to wear like one after the other because I did stay over at my boyfriend's house like the first week of May and the Lancome foundation was the only one that I brought with me and I ended up staying like two nights in a row rather than just one because I was just going to stay on Thursday night and then go home Friday because I'm pretty sure we, I think that was May, I think it was the first week of May. We went to a, a Ducks game on the island. They're our Long Island baseball team. And my friend won tickets to go to the game. And, well, my my uh, boyfriend's best friend's girlfriend won the tickets. And she won tickets for a suite. So we went. And um, the only foundation I brought with me was the Lancome. Because I didn't think I was going to be... I only brought makeup for the next day. Because I had already taken off my makeup to go to his house because obviously I wasn't going to keep it on. I think I had worked earlier that day and then I just went to his house right after that. And um, Friday was for the game so I just brought makeup for that and I brought what I was wearing. But I ended up staying an extra day and I think I had something else to wear. Oh yeah, I just wore literally the same thing I wore to the game. I wore it to work the next day because I had bought a shirt and a sweater before I went to his house. So I just wore that shirt and sweater to work the next day because I had work at like 12 p.m. or something. So I had to go um, to work after the game. So I stayed over at his house because it was by the time the game was over, it was 11 o'clock. <coughs> so I ended up staying over and I only brought a certain amount of makeup with me. I only brought um, my basic ColourPop single eyeshadows and I brought two... ColourPop single press shadows because I wasn't sure like which lid shade I wanted to bring wear and I also brought one Stila glitter because <clears throat> you know I like to have options so that's all I brought I only brought the ColourPop single shadows and three single like individual shadows and I ended up wearing Lightning Bug I think to the or the Stila glitter to the game and then the next day I just wore a uh, Lightning Bug on my lid and I wore the same ColourPop shadows because. I've been still been reaching for those a ton this month, my ColourPop shadows. I wear them so much. Um, that's, a, that's all I needed. And I just brought the Lancome foundation with me, so I wore it to the game, and I also wore it the day after to um, Lucky to work. And then after 4 o'clock, since I work right near my house, I went back home so I could get some more stuff so I could because I was planning on probably sleeping over um, after that, my eyes, my, like, uh, concealer creased a little bit, so I'm, like, talking so slow, but 
I went back home to pick up more stuff, like my work outfit for the next day, because I had to work at 11 the next day. And then I also picked up the ColourPop Dream Street palette and um, a different foundation. I think I picked up the Dior so I could switch it up, and I picked up, like, I think I still had... I had um, two Line Crime nudes with me, uh, Lulu and Elle, and I had a ColourPop Ultra Satin with me, and I just wore those three lipsticks like all three days because I had a lip shade for every day, and I just realized that that's all I needed. So anyway, the third foundation I wanted to mention is the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. Like I said before, I think I said this last month, the more I wear this foundation, the more I love it. I didn't absolutely love it when I first got it. Um, what I said about this foundation is that I find you have to wear this foundation more to love it because, um, I find that it looks beautiful when you first put it on, but it can look a little bit, uh, texturized and a little bit heavy throughout the day. It looks gorgeous when you first put it on though. This is super full coverage but it wasn't like the Fenty Beauty Foundation. It didn't look super dry on my skin. This has a gorgeous coverage when you put it on. It makes your skin look so beautiful. I know, like I've said before, every time I mention this, like everyone talks about it, but it is a great foundation. So those were the only foundations I wanted to mention. And I ended up reaching for this a lot this past month. Um, I also did a combo of like the Milani Foundation, the Conceal and Perfect Foundation with the Urban Decay all nighter and it was like a perfect coverage it looks so good on my skin but it didn't look that great at the end of the day I forgot what I wore it for I know I was out for like a long time that day it might have been like for like a full day of school and then I think I went out to something afterwards maybe it was when we saw Deadpool or Avengers maybe it was when we saw Deadpool I'm not really exactly sure but I know I wore it for like a long period of time all right let's just move on to concealers I only have three to talk about but they're all like basic concealers that I always use. As you can see, my Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Dark Circle Eraser is basically done. This is like basically empty, you guys, but I love this concealer. It's so easy to use. You just swipe it under your eyes, swipe it all over your face, and it's just such an amazing concealer. Please let me know if you have any recommendations from the drugstore of concealers that I should try. I feel like I'm in a concealer rut right now. I'm done with this one, so I probably will go repurchase a new one. This is my second one that I finished. I love this concealer. It's so good. This is in the shade Fair. And then, of course, you guys are probably sick of, of me talking about the ColourPop No Filter Concealer, but I wear this concealer constantly. As you can see, it's like halfway done. I love this concealer. It's so creamy. It's so easy to use. It's so easy to blend. It has such a beautiful coverage. Love this guy. And this one's in the shade Fair 5. And then the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Concealer in the color Light Ivory. I actually have this one on today, and I also wore it yesterday. I'm kind of trying to use up the older one that I have. I believe this is the newer one. I kind of just whipped out the newer one just to keep on next to the other one when I use the other one up because I reach for this concealer a lot, and I love this one too. It blends out so easily. It's so easy to blend out. So, and It's a little bit of a drier consistency than the other two, but... It's still a great concealer, so I use this one a ton, too, and it's, like, four bucks. Like, it's such a good price. So I just, like, find myself finding cheaper alternatives from the drugstore. And speaking of cheaper alternatives, um, I just wanted to mention the Wet n' Wild Photo Focus Eyeshadow Primer. I've been using this a lot this past month. I've been using this over my Smashbox and my MAC because um, I'm actually running out of both of those. And I actually forgot to grab my other eyeliner that I wanted to talk about. Um, but this is actually a great cons uh, primer. It doesn't really dry out my eyes, even though people say this is better for people that have oily eyelids or oily skin. Um, but this is a great primer. It's very creamy. It's very easy to apply to the eye. So I really like this. And I needed to start using that again because I don't really have much left of the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer and the uh, MAC Primer, <clears throat> the 24-hour eyeshadow base. Those are both, like, almost done. So I had to go back to this because I think my Urban Decay one is dried out because I every time I use it, I feel like it's so dry on my eyes. And that's, like, a really old little tube, so I probably have to get rid of that one. So I'm just going to use this one all the way up. There's still a ton of product in here, so it's going to last me a long time. And then also, if you recommend any eyeshadow primers from the drugstore, let me know. I'm looking for eyeshadow primers, 
face primers and concealers. So let me know, please. Um, and then the last prim <clears throat> primer I wanted to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, is the NYX Glitter Primer. I use this every day, every single day. You do not have to wear a glitter to wear this. I wear this just so my eyeshadows will stay on my lid. And they are so much, it is so much better to use this than to like wet an eyeshadow to... Um, just use it regularly with your finger. I use this under every single eyeshadow now on my lid. And then I just apply my powder eyeshadow or whatever eyeshadow I'm wearing on my lid. If it's a liquid, if it's a pigment, if it's a color pop shadow, if it's a um, powder eyeshadow, this is what I will wear underneath it. And it will help the... Uh, lid shade just stay on my lid. So today I'm wearing the L'Oreal Infallible um, eyeshadow in the shade Amber Rush, which is another favorite, um, which I'm about to jump into eyeshadow anyway. I love that eyeshadow and I'm wearing it on my lids today with the Urban Decay Ultimate Basics palette, which I also am going to mention. Um, but this is so great for this and it makes it so easy to apply this because I had trouble with this transferring to my crease when I first uh, would wear it so I kind of like shied away from wearing it and I didn't really wear it that often but now I like reach for it quite a bit and this makes it so much easier for it to stay on my lid and it makes it so intense like this intensifies any lid shade that I want to put on that I don't have to wet the eyeshadow anymore and then I don't have to waste like so much product or use up it up a lot faster by spritzing my brush and applying it with like uh a setting spray this works so much better because it doesn't skip the product on my lid I find if I wet my eyeshadow first sometimes it could skip skip a little bit and it wouldn't apply evenly because like certain parts would be wet and certain parts would be dry but it might just be my brush I might have to just get new brushes at some point but I'm just like so bad about that this makes it so much easier this is all you need and you need like the tiniest amount this is gonna last me such a long time it looks like I've barely even touched it, but I use it a ton. I use it every single day. I'm telling you guys, if you have problems with your lid shades lasting or anything creasing on you, use a glitter primer. This is all you need. I apply my regular primer first to my whole eye. Then I set it with a powder, like a pressed powder, whatever powder I'm using that day. I'll use it on my eyes and my face. And then I'll just go in with this when I'm ready to go in with my lid shade. Because I'll do my crease first, and then I'll do my lid shade. And this is all I need. It makes it look, look how intense it is. It's so gorgeous, this lid shade. So that's all I need. So that's it about that. And now let's talk about the L'Oreal Infallible Eyeshadow in the shade Amber Rush. This is just so gorgeous with the glitter primer, and it's so much easier to use now. It does look like it's a mess when you open it. It looks like this. But it's so beautiful. I love this eyeshadow. It's just so pretty. And it's so intense. I think I mentioned this last month too. But I wore it a couple times this month as well. I wore it today and I wore it like a couple weeks back. With this eyeshadow palette. Actually the last time I wore it was in my... Uh, I think it was the... It was the Everyday Chit Chat Get Ready With Me that I posted before the one that I just did. Right before this one goes up, I posted a Get Ready With Me like literally two days ago. And I'm posting this video like the day after. Or two days after I posted that. And um, that's where I just use Makeup Geek eyeshadows. But I did do an everyday makeup tutorial like two weeks before that. And this is the exact look that I did on my eyes. I think I changed up the face products a little bit. But I use this eyeshadow on my lid in the Urban Decay Naked Basics palette. And it just looks so pretty. So I wanted to wear that look again today. So that's what I did. Because um, I've been rotating a ton of other eyeshadows. So that's it for that eyeshadow. Um, and then speaking of other single eyeshadows, I wanted to mention ColourPop's Get Lucky. I actually had not worn this in a while. And I whipped it out and used it again this month a couple of times. It is the most beautiful gold eyeshadow. It's the uh, Super Shock Shadow Ultra Metallic. It is so crazy when you like whip out your old products or old ColourPop eyeshadows. Oldies but goodies, man. They are so freaking beautiful. And actually, I still use 
Now I use the glitter primer with these and it makes these so much easier to apply because sometimes I find that they're not super pigmented if you don't apply them with a glitter primer. I mean, they're so gorgeous. Look at that. Look how gorgeous that is. That's get lucky right there. I mean, come on. Look how much it reflects in the light. That is so freaking gorgeous. So I love that eyeshadow and I had not worn it in a hot minute, like probably months. And I whipped it out and started using it again, and now I, like, can't get enough of it. It's so gorgeous. So I wore it quite a few times this month, and it's beautiful. So I love that. And then I also wanted to, of course, talk about the milk pigments again, but I did wear these quite a few times this month as well. Um, I definitely wore these at least twice each time. So when I went to my boyfriend's house and I went back, uh, to get supplies from my house. I got the Dream Street palette in this one and I just wore this on my lid with the ColourPop Dream Street palette and it looks beautiful. This one's in the shade Gig. Again, these are so amazing and this one's in the shade Hotel Lobby. I cannot rave about these enough. I know I talk about them like every single month and you're probably sick of me talking about them. But I told my sister to try them for like stage wear because I'm like, these won't move off of your lid. These will last such a long time. Excuse me. She did ask me about <laughs> milk products the last time that she was here. And she asked me like, how do you like them? Do you think that they work? And I was like, yeah, milk products are amazing. I was like, you have to try these pigments. So hopefully she'll try them for stage and I'll see what she thinks too. But these are amazing. I'm not going to swatch them because they are so hard to get off your hand but this one's like a beautiful bronze shade it's like literally is this color like if you want to like imagine what color it is it's literally the color of the type on the tube and then this is the gold you can obviously see the gold in the back they're so gorgeous I wore this one out like a week or two ago I haven't really went out this week um, I'm just gonna be hanging out with my boyfriend like I said I was supposed to go to happy hour today but it didn't happen but I wore this out because I saw my friend Danielle like two weeks ago and we went to Dave and & Buster's and I wore this on the lid with, I forget what crease shades I wore. I think I just wore Anastasia or like some single eyeshadows. I don't remember what it was. And I just wore like this similar type of look. I just really have been living in everyday makeup looks. That's all I've been wanting to wear lately. I feel like since I've been getting older, I've just not been, like, super into color lately. Um, but also because I haven't really been going out that much, so I'm not really going to wear colorful shades all the time every day, you know? Um, and this looks so gorgeous on the lid. I got, like, a few compliments on my makeup that night, so that was nice. Um, I'm going to go check on my mom to see if she needs me to help her with dinner, and I'm going to film the rest of this after, probably after dinner, because we're probably going to eat. <laughs> so I'll be back. Alright, so let's just continue talking about this stuff because um, dinner's going to be ready in like 15 minutes. So anyway, let's talk about some face products first. Uh, I kind of feel like continuing face products and then we'll talk about eyeshadow palettes because we have like quite a few to talk about. So I got this bronzer last month during the Ulta 20% off and I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in my May favorites, but I actually used it a ton well, in my April favorites, but I used it a ton in May as well. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Powder Bronzer in the shade Rosewood. I was reaching for this a ton, and I actually really do enjoy it. It's a really pretty bronzer. It's really nice for fair skin tones. Very pigmented. It's a very pigmented bronzer, so you can use a very light hand, but as you guys can see, I've been using it quite a bit. I have a ton of brush marks in here because I've been using it a ton. It's really beautiful on the skin. Her powders are just so, this is so soft and smooth. See how pretty it is? It's not like too orange, which I love. It's like really, really neutral. It's not orange at all, which I prefer for a bronzer. I'm actually wearing the Physician's Formula bronzer today. I'm really not wearing anything that I'm talking about in this video, but YOLO. And then um, the next bronzer I wanted to talk about, I whipped out my Too Faced um, Sweethearts bronzer in the shade Sweet Tea. This is a baked luminous glow bronzer. Um, this is usually my summer bronzer and I whipped it out again and I've used it quite a bit this month and I love this bronzer. It's so beautiful for summertime and I only use this in the summer. So it's just a really beautiful, it's kind of getting a little bit low in the middle. Um, but again, it has a very nice neutral undertone. It's a lot different than the uh, Anastasia one. This one's much more of like a tan color. 
The Anastasia one has a little bit more of a deeper uh, brown to it. It's kind of like a pinky brown, and this one's more of a much more neutral kind of shade. It's not really orange either, but this gives you the most beautiful glow on your cheeks as a bronzer, and it also, um, it just looks beautiful. I love it. So I love Too Faced uh, bronzers. They're actually really, really good. So, But this is my absolute favorite bronzer from them. So <clears throat> as I'm dropping it, and then I also... Since speaking of bronzers, I wanted to mention the Too Faced Natural Face Highlight Blush Bronzing Veil Face Palette. I don't know if I mentioned this in my favorites video last month. Um, I tried to make sure I didn't repeat a lot. Of, I mean, I am going to repeat a lot of products because if you guys didn't know, I was on a strict, strict no buy this month. I also really can afford to buy makeup right now because I've been sub um, offsetting my boyfriend's expenses since he doesn't have a job right now. So I don't really need anything though. I've just been enjoying my collection right now. Um, but I definitely did use this quite a bit this month as well. This is a Too Faced Natural Face Palette. This packaging, you guys, it's so beautiful. It's just so romantic. And then this is what it looks like. As you guys can see, I definitely use the uh, highlighters quite a bit this month. Um, the highlighters are really beautiful. Um, I also used the bronzer a couple of times this month. This is such a gorgeous bronzer as well. So I wanted to talk about the bronzer before we jump into the other products. So this is the bronzer, and again, such a beautiful tone. It's the third one on the bottom. It's really, really pretty, right? These they have such nice tones to them. They're not paint. They're not orange, which I really, really love. Um, but let's jump into blushes, which I really don't have like not that much blushes at all because I didn't really use like too many blushes regularly this month. I mostly was reaching for my Urban Decay Afterglow blushes. I'm wearing video today, which I love. Um, I reached for a lot of my MAC blushes this month, and I used, um, well, I did use my Becca blushes a, quite a few times this month, and, uh, but I, I didn't really reach for anything else like that regularly, and I used, um, my, I use my MAC blushes a ton this month. So, yeah, I just wanted to mention these two again, Pink Wink and uh, Pink Sand. Really pretty shades. Um, so we'll just swatch these two as well. They're just really pretty. Um, very subtle. Well, the pink one actually has some really nice pigment to it. And Pink Sand, I wish had a little bit more pigment to it, but it's really, really nice. I wore, I've worn this quite a few times this month as well. So that one is the Pink Sand, and that one is Pink Wink. And uh, we'll just talk about the highlighters since we already have this out, since I'm basically talking about highlighters and blushes at like the same time. So this one is Starlight, and this one is Satin Sheets. These are really, really pretty highlighters. Really nice formula. It's really nice and creamy. It's just a beautiful sheen on your face. It's not like too light or too intense, but I love mixing both of these together. So these are the two highlighters. See how pretty those are? They're not like insane, but I wear these quite I wore these quite a bit this past month and they're really really pretty. So that one is I believe satin sheets and that one is uh the pinkier one is called ow starlight and they're really beautiful the gold one is satin sheets and that one is starlight really pretty right so gorgeous so that's it for that palette um but i really have been enjoying it so i'm glad i picked this up from Too faced even though i still think they're kind of a shady company um i have been enjoying this a lot so that is that palette and then just to finish up talking about blushes and then we will go eat dinner um, I just wanted to mention my uh, MAC blushes this month. I, again, like I said, I was using them a ton this month. Usually when I sleep over somebody's house or if I'm going to be somewhere like a couple of days, these are the only blushes that I bring with me. I usually bring my Tarte Leopard palette with me and I stick my MAC blushes in there and a couple of like ColourPop or MAC or Makeup Geek eyeshadows in there that I like use every day and like can't live without. So I just stuck 
Me uh, Melba and Margin in there, and I think Spring Sheen, and those are always the only three blushes I usually bring with me if I go somewhere, because they work with every single look. They always look beautiful, and then I have three options to choose from, and they are always going to go with everything. So I've been using Melba a ton. It's just one of the best MAC blushes out there. Obviously, it's really popular for a reason. It's a cult favorite. Margin, of course, is a, another cult favorite, which is amazing. I love that MAC blushes are buildable, and they go on so smoothly. So I just love MAC blushes. And um, the other one is Spring Sheen. I think I brought Style with me, actually, over uh, Spring Sheen. But this one's also a gorgeous one as well. But they're all so good. I pretty much used all of these this month, and they're just so beautiful. I think the only one I didn't use were... Uh, Love Cloud and um, Modern Mandarin, but I'm definitely going to use this one again. I was using more of Becca's Tiger Lily, which is also one of my favorite summery blushes. So, And that's like a super orange blush, but it's so beautiful on the skin. Alright, let's go see if dinner's ready. Yeah, whatever. So anyway, um, let's continue with highlighters. So I wanted to talk about this one first. I did wear this a lot at the beginning of the month, and I think I actually really love this highlighter now. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Amrezy highlighter. And like I told you guys before, I wasn't really a huge fan of Amrezy, but this highlighter really is beautiful, and I'm glad that I tried it out. Um, I probably should have bought a different collaboration, uh, like something from Made You Look again, or um, I think there's another... Um, collab that was out from another YouTuber that I like more. But like I said before, when I got this, I was torn between the Smashbox and Vlada highlighter or this one. But I know who Amrezy is. I'm not like a huge fan of her, but I wanted to at least try this out because everybody was raving about it. And I really do like this highlighter. So I don't love her, but I think that the highlighter is beautiful. It's a beautiful formula. I hope that they come out with more highlighters like this. It's just a beautiful wet sheen and it's not there's no glitter in it it's just a straight up gold sheen it really is gorgeous I was wearing this a lot more towards the beginning of the month at least a few times I was mixing this with other highlighters and I was wearing it on its own by itself and I thought it was just so pretty so this is definitely a really nice highlighter it's not like the greatest highlighter in the universe like everybody's making it out to be but it is really good so it is worth a try if you guys like Amrezy. If you don't I would skip over it but um, if you do I would try it out. Um, and then the next one is the MAC uh, Extra Dimension Skin Finish in the shade Whisper of Guilt. I just wore this two days ago and it was actually the first time that I wore it all by itself. Because when I was wearing this, I was mixing it with the Amrezy highlighter and I was wearing these two together. But um, this is a really pretty highlighter too, actually. I wasn't sure how I felt about this one. I liked Oh Darling a lot more because I thought it had a lot more pigment to it. But I actually think I prefer their... Um... Sorry, my best friend is texting me. I'm sorry I'm so distracted. But I'm trying to talk to my best friend right now too. Um... Because we're both, like, supposed to be home. Or hopefully she'll be home later. So, yeah. Anyway, um, this is Whisper of Guilt by MAC. Like I told you guys before, I don't know if I mentioned this in my favorites last month. Because I wasn't really too into it. I didn't think it was that great. Um, but this is, like, such a cult classic. It's such a hyped up product. Like, everybody and their mom would talk about this highlighter. And I was so happy when I saw that... MAC was bringing it back permanently. They're probably just like, whatever, we need to bring it back permanently since people always want it. So this is Whisper of Guilt right here on this, oh my god, this side right here. So that one is Whisper of Guilt. Why am I so confused by this swatch right now? This one is Whisper of Guilt on this side. Yeah, this one right here. Look how like gorgeous that is in the light. Honestly, these two swatch next to each other, the Amrezy and the Whisper of Guilt, look like straight up dupes. Um, the Amrezy is just slightly lighter, but they are literally like almost so close to being exact dupes. It's kind of like crazy. Um, but now I've been actually liking this a lot more. It's not like too blinding and it's not 
like super subtle. It's like one of like a medium tone kind of glow. And um, I've been wearing it a lot more often. Like I said, I just wore it like two days ago because I wore a full face of MAC yesterday and the day before because I've just been so into MAC recently. Um, but I wore this two days ago with um, just by itself and it looked really pretty. So um, I definitely reached for this a lot more this past month because I was able to use like all these newer highlighters more often. So that was really pretty. It's not like my favorite highlighter from MAC. And honestly, I was pretty underwhelmed by it when I actually got it. But it was good. It wasn't like amazing though. Um, this one is amazing though. I love this highlighter. I wish I could wear this every single day. I probably will start wearing a little bit more often soon. Um, but for like icy white highlighters, I tend to go for them more during the winter months rather than the summertime. So this is the Ofra highlighter in the shade Glazed Donut and this is the Nikki Tutorials collaboration one. And I'm pretty sure I talked about this in my last favorites video. And it is just so gorgeous, so intense. Look how beautiful this guy is. It's just so beautiful. So let me swatch this one for you guys. That one is the Ofra one. It is so intense. Like, look at that. Isn't that so beautiful? Literally, this is like one of my all-time favorite highlighters already from Ofra. And Ofra is like my my like all-time favorite highlighting formula. Because they are just so pigmented. They are so intense. So beautiful. They kind of remind me of Becca, but even more intense. And this highlighter is phenomenal. She did an amazing job. So... I can't wait to wear that again. I'm probably not going to wear it again for a while, though. And then the next highlighter is the Stila Heaven's Hue Highlighter in the shade Kitten. This is what the packaging looks like. And this one, I'm not, like, over the moon about this highlighting formula. It is good, though. It looks really pretty on the skin. When you swatch it, it really just doesn't look like anything. It's very, very subtle when you swatch it. You have to put it, I'm like, when you swatch it, <coughs> when you swatch it, you have to put it on your face. So that one is the Stila one. It looks really pretty in the light, though. It's right there. You see how it's like more of a just a sheen rather than like an intense glow. But for this, I find myself that I have to wet it in order for me to really love it. But I think it's because it's a cream that <coughs> you have to wet it. But it's beautiful on the skin once you have it on. Okay, and then the next two that I actually reached for a lot this month are the Wet n Wild Highlighting Powders in the shades uh, Blossom Glow and Precious Petals. I was mixing these a lot with other highlighters just to add an extra glow. I did use Precious Petals a couple of times in the past week or two. I just love these highlighters. Again, I can't rave about these enough. They're so beautiful from the drugstore, and they're so cheap, but these are some of the best quality highlighters you're going to get from the drugstore, and I love the Physician's Formula one as well, um, but I wanted to mention these two because I haven't worn the Physician's Formula one in quite a while. So that one is Precious Petals, and that one is Blossom Glow. Today, I'm wearing Urban Decay Sin a little bit with um, the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter, underneath it and it gave it a really pretty glow. I'm wearing a lot of Urban Decay products today. So that one is Blossom Glow and that one is Precious Petals. So those are both really gorgeous. I love them. Cannot get enough of these Wet n Wild highlighters. They're so, 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 so good. <clears throat> and then the last two individual ones I wanted to talk about are these two from Bobbi Brown. I whipped these out from my room um, this past month and I just recently wore both of them and they are so intense on the skin This one is bronze glow So beautiful so intense for summer so bronzy Look how pigmented this one is so beautiful Maybe I'll go out and get a drink with Becca on Friday then because I'm not doing anything else So maybe she's free on Friday who knows so this one is Bronze Glow, and this one is right here. Really, really pretty, intense, bronzy highlighter. And then this one is Pink Glow, which is kind of cracked a little bit, but I just wore this yesterday to work by itself. And it's so beautiful, like so intense. These aren't for everyone. They do have a, 
a, quite a bit of glitter particles in them, but I just think they're so gorgeous on the skin. So that one is bronze glow and that one is pink glow. And I just whipped them out and used them again. And they're just so intense. They're such a beautiful formula. You really like don't even need to wet these. They're so good. They're so expensive, Bobbi Brown highlighters. That's why I only own two of them. Um, I think I picked up both of these during the 15% off sale at Sephora. But I have not picked up one since then. And these I picked up like two years ago. Um, but I try to use them when I can and they're beautiful. So I'm definitely going to use them a lot more this next month. There was one, at one point I was using this highlighter, Bronze Glow and Electrify from Makeup Geek like religiously one month. And they were both just like my go-to highlighters. But they're beautiful. This is so bronzy and intense and that one's so like such a beautiful pink glow. And then the last highlighter I wanted to talk about or highlighters is the ColourPop Innuendo palette. I did get this in my last haul video and I reach for this a ton. I'm using, I use this all the time. It's such a beautiful highlighting palette. I did bring this to my boyfriend's house to wear that day when I wore the ColourPop Dream Street palette, the ColourPop Lightning Bug on my lid and I wore this as my highlighter. And it was just so, it's just so pretty. And I wore this like a few, I think like last week or something. So as you guys can see, I've used it quite a bit. And these are just gorgeous. So I'm just going to swatch them real quick. I'm going to swatch the same three shades that I always talk about when I mention this in a favorites video. But they're really beautiful. And these are still my three favorite shades. Um, glad you came on the loose and morning after. So this one's glad you came on the loose and morning after. So those are the three shades. You're not really going to see them that well, but On the Loose is my favorite shade in the palette. It's such a pretty white gold kind of color, but they're really pretty highlights too. So let's wipe all these highlights off my hand, and then we're going to jump into some eyeshadow. So that is the highlighting palette. So that's it for highlighters. Okay, so the first one I wanted to talk about is the Natasha Denona Mini Sunset Palette. I did already mention the Milk Pigments. Um, so sorry that's a little bit all over the place with eyeshadows. I didn't really reach for this this month, but I just wanted to mention it again. And I kind of like, um, I'm planning on using it very soon. I'm just waiting to get these sandals that I ordered from Lucky. Because I'm planning on wearing this with like a whole outfit to work. I know that's like a little bit extra. I'm probably going to wear this on Friday or Saturday. Um, but I haven't really worn anything that calls for like a red lid. So I haven't reached for this, um, but I am going to wear it on Friday or Saturday. I've just been rotating a lot of eyeshadow palettes, and I, this just isn't hasn't been one that I've been reaching for, but I am going to use it again very soon. I haven't even used my Wet n Wild um, eyeshadow palette since I repurchased it. I've only used it twice since I've actually repurchased it, and I've only used this twice. So I'm definitely going to use it more often very soon. Um, I think I'm going to use it a lot more in the summertime, um, but I can't always use like five pan palettes. Like I'm using single shadows or I'm using like other palettes, but these are gorgeous eyeshadows. So hopefully I'll be able to use it more this next month. I mean, I did use it in that first impressions get ready with me and then like one more time after that. I think I used this when I went out to dinner with my boyfriend's parents. I don't know if I used it then in May. Maybe I didn't use this in May. I know I've only reached for this like twice, but they are gorgeous eyeshadows and it's still a favorite of mine. So, and this was the only thing I ended up keeping from the Vibe sale. I returned the Laura Mercier concealer and I returned the Fenty Beauty foundation because this was the only thing that I liked because I actually did not like the Laura Mercier concealer either. Like I am very picky with concealers now and if I don't fall in love with a high-end concealer, I'm not keeping it. And the same thing, the same thing with foundations. Because I have like so many foundations. Sorry, like my stupid shirt isn't sitting properly on my shoulder. But yeah, this is a good palette. Um, so hopefully I'll use it more this month. But I just wanted to mention it because it is a really nice palette. I actually ended up using this quite a bit this month, like a couple of times. And I want to reach for it more. This is actually a really nice little palette. This is the Smashbox Full Exposure travel size palette and like I told you guys these are the only Smashbox eyeshadows I own and I was oh there's a bug in my room I think it died going into my lamp yeah I think it did because this light is so freaking bright and I think it just died like going into the lamp 
Oh my god, that kind of scared me. <laughs> that just like blind me too. Oh my god. So anyway, oh crapola. No. Okay, well that's actually just went right back on there. So anyway, um oh, Jesus, holy moly. All right, well that keeps on falling off, so I'm just going to hold it like this. Um, but I've just been using like mostly these shades here. I'll use like mostly all of the matte shades when I use this palette just for like a basic look and then I'll use these two shades. I'll use this shade on the lid and this shade on the inner corners and they're actually really nice uh, eyeshadows so I've been really liking it. I don't Again, I don't know why this gets such a bad rep. I think it's a nice little palette and I think it's kind of perfect for travel and for... Um, just for a basic eyeshadow palette, I think it's nice for beginners because they perform, they do their job. So those ones are some of the eyeshadows from the palette. Those are two of the shimmers and one of the mattes. I actually really like it. I think it's a nice little palette. So if you guys have tried the Smashbox eyeshadows, let me know. I, I think that they're a decent formula. So a lot of people just don't like them. So now I want to talk about what I'm wearing on my eyes. This is the Urban Decay Naked Ultimate Basics palette. It would be helpful if I actually held it the proper way so this is the ultimate basics palette and um this is actually like a palette that I don't really hear about that much either but I have been using it a couple of times this month I used it in that get ready with me that I posted the everyday makeup tutorial and then I used it today I'm like oh I should start using this more for like more days when I'm just like not really doing much because my mom and I just went shopping today to go to Lucky, I got like two shirts and um, a cardigan, and then we went to Uncle Giuseppe's and we bought lobster for each other, so, well, my mom got it for me, and we both had lobster tonight, so that was my day, but um, honestly, it's really nice to just relax one day, so I should just appreciate it when I can, because I know in September, that's not how it's going to be anymore, and I know like this next month, it's going to be a little bit busy for me, so... Um, this is like my only week to really like chill. Um, but this palette's really, really good. I love using it just for basic looks. I basically use the same like six eyeshadows in here. Blow, Nudie, Commando, Tempted, Pregame, Faith, and Lockout. And those are usually the shades that I use. Like I put Nudie and Commando mixed together in my crease today. Darken up the crease more with Faith. And then put Lockout on the outer corners. And then I put Blow and pregame on the brow bone and then I put the L'Oreal Infallible all over my lid and that's my whole eye look and then I just put color pops let me explain on the inner corners and really nice palette I really like this guy it's just simple to use um and it, it I love Urban Decay obviously so I've been using this palette a little bit more often I'm probably going to be using the Naked Heat palette a lot more since the summer's rolling around um, I'm planning on using it like two days from now, so I love that palette. And then of course I have to mention the ColourPop Dream Street palette again. I use this palette again so much and I literally have mentioned it like probably every single month since I've gotten it, but I just love this freaking palette. It works for everything. I'm not going to bore you guys with talking about it a million times, but I use all of these shades right here. Like, literally all of these shades every time I use this palette. I probably haven't used, like, the colorful shades recently. But four, five, six, seven, eight, like, nine out of the 12 shades I use, like, every single time I use this palette. I always use these two in the crease. And I'm also trying to hit pan on both of these. So, I'm trying to use these, like, pretty religiously when I actually use the palette. And they're just so good. They're so pigmented. And I think the reason why I love these eyeshadows is because they're ColourPop's formula. And I love the ColourPop formula. It's just so good. Ugh, the bug is still, like, flying around. But it's not really, like, a mosquito or anything. It's just a little bug, so I'm really not concerned about it. So... Um, it's not like anything that's really going to hurt me. It's like a little fly or something. But anyway, it's amazing. I love this freaking palette. And like I said, she did a bomb ass job. I'm just going to swatch these two shades because I absolutely love these two. I basically just swatched the whole first row for you guys. So these are the two first, the first two eyeshadows in the first row. Look how gorgeous they are. 
that's these two and that's um stardust and twinkle they're just so gorgeous so i can't rave about these enough they're just amazing i feel like i'm gonna be talking for 10 million years i thought i wasn't gonna have that many products to talk about and i have like a million to talk about okay the next eyeshadow palette is the Tarte Tartlet and Bloom palette. I actually have been using this quite a bit this month. I don't absolutely love this palette because I don't think it's as good quality as I thought it was when I first got it. Um, but I do like it for softer tone looks. As you guys know, like I said, I've been more into softer glam looks rather than um, like full color and stuff like that. So I've been writing this palette a lot to work. I just wore it um, like a couple of days ago. I'm also trying to hit pan on Flower Child. The Funny Girl is a gorgeous shade from the inner corners. I love this shade. Usually when I wear this palette, that's Flower Child, that's uh, Funny Girl. Usually I wear this palette as a pairing palette with like a ColourPop lid shade. So I'll usually use like there's only three lid lid options in this palette anyway, so I mostly use most of these mattes, like these four mattes and these mattes here. So I use like these eight shades the most in this palette. Sometimes I'll pop like Firecracker on the lid, but I'll use like Lala from ColourPop and like Sequin from ColourPop along with this palette. And it just comes out to be a really pretty soft look, so that's what I like this palette for. Again, not the huge fan of, hugest fan of Target anymore, a Target tart anymore. But whatever, to each their own. And then the last eyeshadow palette is the Venus Lime Crime Venus XL eyeshadow palette. I just, again, freaking love this palette. I use this palette just as much as I did last month. And I can't get enough of it. It's so beautiful. I just used this last week for a full look with um, when I went to work on, I believe it was last Friday or Saturday. And they're just phenomenal eyeshadows. Again, I love this palette. If you guys want to see it fully swatched, I have a full review on it. Um, so these are the two eyeshadows that I wanted to swatch. This is Love and Inspire. They're just so gorgeous. Like, they're so pigmented. This one's Botticelli and this one is Burnt Gold. Like, do you see, like, how pigmented these are? Botticelli is a little bit, um, it's a little bit, uh, gritty, but it's so beautiful. So that one's Botticelli, and that one is, uh, burned gold. So I love these eyeshadows. They're beautiful. Um, I'm probably not going to purchase the third Venus palette since I have this one, and I don't think that those are really shades that I really need. They came out with a Venus 3 palette, like, right after... Like, literally, like, a few weeks ago, they came out with this palette, like, in February or March. The Lavender palette, they came out with, like, for the summertime, like, in May. So, um, but I'm not going to buy that palette. I just want to stick with this one because this one is all I need. It's so gorgeous. And I can still create so many summery looks with that palette as well. And then the last eyeshadows, I just needed to give a shout-out to my ColourPop shadows again. I'm sorry. I just love these eyeshadows so much. I know I mention them almost every month, but I use them all the time. So this one, I just went and swatched Wake Up Call, but I'm trying to hit pan on Wake Up Call and Note to Self. They're just like my go-to crease shades. And that one is Note to Self and, no, this is Note to Self and that one is Wake Up Call. They're just so good. They're so easy to use for every day. And then let me explain, again, was like one of my favorite eyeshadows to use on the inner corners this month. And then uh, let me explain and Liar Liar. They're just amazing. Like ColourPop eyeshadows are so bomb. They're just so pigmented. And they're I just love them. So these are like the only shadows that I brought to his house when I went there. And they just worked beautifully. I love these eyeshadows. So... I don't want to bore you with them any longer because I talk about them all the time. All right, let's just talk about lips, and then we're basically done. So the first lipstick I wanted to talk about was the um, MAC Patrick Star She Better Work lipstick. I actually wore this quite a few times this month. It's just such a gorgeous pink matte shade to wear for every day. Look how beautiful that shade is. Like, come on. It's just so creamy. I love it. I love the MAC lipstick formula. 
And then the other two are the ColourPop Luxe lipsticks. Again, I wore these a ton this month. This is Layover and this is Money Side Up. So this one is Layover, which is more of an everyday nude shade and it's just a gorgeous formula. I absolutely love this shade. That one is Layover right there. And then this one is called Money Side Up. And this I actually wore a couple of times this month. I wore it on Mother's Day and I also wore it the last time that I wore the outfit that I wore this originally with on Mother's Day to work. And it's just a gorgeous pink. Look how beautiful that is. They're just so pigmented and gorgeous. Then the next one is the Anastasia Beverly, Anastasia Beverly Hills Lipstick in the shade Peachy. A gorgeous matte peachy nude lipstick. So that one is uh, peachy right here. It's so beautiful. I love that shade as well. And then um, Too Faced uh, Natural Nudes Skinny Dippin' Coconut Cream Lipstick. I actually didn't wear this as much as Peachy this month. I haven't worn it in a while actually, but that one is Skinny Dippin'. Um, I don't love this one as much as uh, the other lipsticks that I'm talking about because it kind of wears off a little bit on the inside of my lips. Today I'm wearing Stark Naked by Urban Decay and I've been trying to wear more of my Urban Decay lipsticks lately. I just wore a safe word like a couple of days ago. They're so amazing. I love these lipsticks so much. They're so beautiful, pigmented, and creamy. Love Urban Decay lipsticks. This one's a little bit more luminous, but it kind of wears off a little bit on the inside of my lips. But it's still a good lipstick. And then, of course, the Fenty Beauty Matte Moselle lipstick in single. So gorgeous. I can't wait to put this on my lips again. I haven't worn it in a little while, but it's so gorgeous. But I definitely did wear it a couple of times this month, and I freaking love it. And then the Smashbox... Uh, be a Legendary Lipstick in the shade Hideout. I didn't really wear this that much this month, but um, it's still a gorgeous lipstick. I think I wore it like the first week of the month, and it's just such a gorgeous pink. So that one is that one right there. I really didn't have any liquid lipsticks to talk about because I didn't get any new ones, and I didn't really wear any like too consistently, so I didn't really want to mention any. But I did wear a ton of my ColourPop Ultra Satin Lips this month. That was basically the lipsticks I was reaching for the most and I just love that formula. So I wore like Aquarius, Magic Wand, Echo Park, um, Alyssa, all of those lipsticks like so many times like this month, that formula. And then just two glosses or three glosses. I've actually worn this gloss the most this month. This is the Bite Beauty um, Lush Fruit Lip Gloss in the shade Honey. I actually like love these Bite Beauty lip glosses. I didn't really wear the Becca one or the Moonchild one as often as this one this month. I wore this quite a few times. I kind of rediscovered it again. It's such a gorgeous uh, nude shade. I wore it with my Bite Beauty lipstick in Honeycomb like a couple weeks ago. And I wore this again, I will leave with a, a different lipstick. And it looked gorgeous. And then my Too Faced Creamy peach oil lip glosses in peach fuzz and papa don't peach i love these they're so good you guys i wore peach fuzz with um anastasia's peachy i put this over it i wore these two together like a couple of days ago i actually this was the the lip combo i was wearing in my lip life update video i was wearing these two on the lips and it looks so pretty and then this one is the papa don't peach color I just love these two face lip glosses. I could have worn this today over this. I might actually wear this tomorrow with um like a matte lipstick because I'm planning to go out with my boyfriend tomorrow. But it's just so pretty like And they give you like that whiff of peach when you first put it on. And it's just so, oh, they're just so pretty. Do you see how like juicy and glossy it made my lips look? Oh, I love it. And then I just wanted to mention two eyeliners and one mascara. I literally could get rid of all my lip, my all my eyeliners today and just keep these two in my collection. These are literally the only two I wore this past month besides the Lancome black eyeliner because I love that eyeliner. 
If I had that one in full size, these would be the only three eyeliners I would need. This is Max Risque. I'm wearing it on my um, waterline today. This is a nude liner. I absolutely love it. It's such a good um, nude eyeliner. This is the MAC Technical Liner in the shade Risque. And then, of course, Max Costa Riche. I, I call in Costa Riche. It's just so amazing, you guys. It's such a gorgeous... Look how richly brown that is. It's so amazing. I love this so much. I'm so happy I got this, and I've been wearing it ever since I got it. It's like the only brown eyeliner I've been using since I got it, like two or three months ago. So, obviously, you know it's a favorite of mine. And then the It Cosmetics Super Hair Mascara has, like, been my go-to mascara since I've gotten it from a sample from Ulta. I think I just picked up a Real Technique sponge and some makeup wipes there, and they gave me a free sample of It Cosmetics Superhero. This is the best mascara I've ever used. It's so good. It makes your lashes so long. Um, I love a bunch of drugstore mascaras as well, but this one is just amazing. It lengthens your lashes so much and separates them. It's so beautiful. And that's it, you guys. That's it for my favorites this month. Um, but yeah. That's it, you guys. So please like and subscribe. Sorry that this video was so long again. I probably shouldn't have chit-chatted for so long, but I haven't filmed, sat down and filmed in a while, so I wanted to just update you guys on what's going on. So next week will be more eventful for me. This week, not really. So yeah, I don't really care. I'm busy the whole weekend anyway. So that's it. So please like and subscribe. Follow me on all my social media. Thank you for all the new subscribers that I'm getting. You guys are awesome. Let me let me know what you guys think about my haircut too. I still think he cut it too short. I, like, it's driving me crazy. But that's it. I love you guys. Bye. And please let me know what your favorites were this month. Bye.